Ever feel like social interactions and relationships are like a puzzle you're trying to solve as an introvert? That sensation is not uncommon, and it's precisely why we're embarking on this enlightening journey today. We're diving into the fascinating realm of introverts and relationships, navigating the social sphere. Introverts, individuals who draw energy from their inner world, often find the social landscape a bit challenging to traverse. It's like they're fluent in a different social language, one that is quieter, deeper and more reflective. Understanding this language is crucial, not just for introverts themselves, but for everyone around them. The importance here lies in acknowledging the unique needs and challenges introverts face in relationships. These range from the need for solitude to recharge, to dealing with social exhaustion, and the struggle to communicate effectively in a world that never seems to stop talking. Navigating the social sphere as an introvert is a journey, and we're here to guide you. From friendships to family connections and romantic partnerships, relationships take many forms. You see, an introvert's interaction with a lifelong friend might differ vastly from that with a new romantic partner. Each relationship type brings its own set of expectations, challenges and rewards. Let's talk about friendships first. For an introvert, a close-knit circle of trusted friends can be a sanctuary, a place to share thoughts and experiences without the fear of being overwhelmed. Then there are family relationships. These connections, often laden with history and unspoken rules, can be both comforting and challenging for introverts. Navigating these dynamics requires a delicate balance of respecting traditions and asserting personal needs. Lastly, romantic partnerships. These can be wonderful journeys of mutual discovery, but can also demand a high level of emotional energy. For introverts, maintaining their own space while building intimacy can be a careful dance. Whether it's a friend, a family member, or a significant other, each relationship type presents its own unique dynamics. Recognizing the challenges is the first step towards better relationships. In the journey of introverts navigating the social sphere, we encounter a few common hurdles that might seem familiar. One of the most prominent challenges can be communication difficulties. As an introvert, expressing your thoughts and feelings might feel like you're climbing a steep mountain. But let's remember, it's okay. You're not alone in this journey. Many introverts grapple with the same struggle. And it's not a sign of weakness, but rather a part of your unique personality. Another common challenge is social exhaustion. Picture this. You've been at a social gathering and you're starting to feel drained, as if your energy is slowly seeping out of you. That's social exhaustion. It's like running a marathon without a finish line in sight. It's important to understand that this is completely normal for introverts. You see, socializing, while enjoyable, can be energy consuming for introverts. Then there's the need for solitude. This might be one of the most misunderstood aspects of being an introvert. It's not about disliking people or avoiding social interaction. No, it's about the need to recharge, to find balance in the quiet moments. Solitude is the sanctuary where introverts replenish their energy. These challenges might seem overwhelming, and at times you might feel out of place in a world that often values extroverted traits. But remember, it's perfectly okay to face these difficulties. Your introverted qualities are not flaws. They're part of who you are, and they come with their own strengths. What's important is to recognize these challenges, not to dwell on them, but to understand them, to understand yourself. Because only then can you start to navigate around them. It's like navigating a ship. To avoid the rocks, you first need to see them. These challenges may seem daunting, but remember, every problem has a solution. And as we continue this journey, we'll explore those solutions, helping you to navigate the social sphere with confidence and ease. Communication is the lifeblood of any relationship. For introverts, effective communication might seem like a daunting task, but fear not, it can be mastered with a little understanding and practice. Let's explore some practical tips. Firstly, let's talk about active listening. It's more than just hearing what someone says. It involves understanding, responding, and then remembering. Introverts usually excel at this due to their natural tendency to observe and process information deeply. So, leverage this strength. When someone speaks, focus on their words, their tone, their body language. Respond thoughtfully, showing that you genuinely care about their perspective. Next is honest expression. It's about being true to your feelings and thoughts and articulating them respectfully. As an introvert, you may find it challenging to express yourself especially in a world that often seems to favor extroverted qualities. 
However, remember that your voice matters. Whether it's a simple text message or a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, don't shy away from sharing your insights and emotions. Your unique perspective is valuable. Finally, the balancing act between solitude and socialization. This can be especially tricky for introverts. You might crave your alone time to recharge, but at the same time, you can't ignore the importance of social interaction. The key here is to find your own rhythm. Be open about your need for solitude, but also make an effort to connect with others. It's not about conforming to societal norms, but about finding a harmony that works for you. Mastering communication as an introvert is about understanding and expressing your needs while also respecting and recognizing the needs of others. Boundaries, they're not walls, they're guidelines. Now let's delve into the concept of healthy boundaries, a crucial component in maintaining any relationship, especially for introverts. Boundaries are essentially the lines we draw around ourselves to define what we consider acceptable behavior from others. They're a way for us to communicate our needs, our values, and our limits. This is vital in every relationship, from romantic partnerships to friendships, and even in our interactions with family members. For introverts, setting boundaries can be a powerful tool to ensure their need for personal space and solitude is respected. It's not about being aloof or detached, Rather, it's about ensuring that your energy levels and personal comfort are taken into consideration. So, how can introverts effectively establish these boundaries? Here's a few tips. Firstly, be clear and direct. It's important to communicate your boundaries in a straightforward manner. If you need time alone to recharge after a social gathering, express that. If you prefer one-on-one -on -one interactions over large group settings, make that known. Secondly, remember, it's okay to say no. As an introvert, social engagements can sometimes feel overwhelming. It's perfectly fine to decline invitations when you need time for yourself. Saying no is not a rejection of the person, but rather a way to take care of your own needs. Finally, ensure consistency. Consistently maintaining your boundaries helps others understand and respect your needs over time. Be firm, but fair. Remember, it's not about being rigid, but about preserving your energy and well-being. In essence, setting boundaries allows introverts to navigate the social sphere on their own terms, making interactions less draining and more fulfilling. It promotes a sense of autonomy while simultaneously fostering meaningful connections with others. So, take a moment to reflect on your own boundaries. Are they clear? Are they respected? If not, it might be time for a conversation. Setting boundaries is not about pushing people away. It's about creating a healthy space for relationships to flourish. So, let's strive to build these spaces, fostering relationships that respect our individuality and our need for personal space. In the world of relationships, sometimes less is more. This statement might sound counterintuitive in a society where popularity is often measured by the number of friends or followers one has. But for introverts, the reality is quite different and arguably more profound. When it comes to relationships, the emphasis for introverts tends to lean towards quality over quantity. This doesn't mean they are antisocial or avoid friendships. Rather, they prefer investing their time and energy into a few close, meaningful relationships. They seek depth over breadth, substance over surface, and authentic connection over casual acquaintances. Consider a garden. A gardener who tries to grow too many varieties of plants may end up with a garden that looks impressive, but lacks the care and attention each plant needs to truly thrive. On the other hand, a gardener who focuses on a select few, giving them the right amount of sunlight, water and nutrients, will cultivate a garden where each plant flourishes in its own unique way. Similarly, introverts tend to cultivate their relationships with the same level of care and attention. Introverts are not seeking to be social butterflies, flitting from one person to another in a flurry of shallow interactions. Instead, they are more like bees, drawn to the flowers that provide the most nectar, the relationships that offer depth, understanding, and mutual growth. This doesn't mean introverts can't have a wide circle of acquaintances or enjoy occasional social events, but their energy is finite, and they choose to spend it where they find the most value and fulfillment. So, if you're an introvert, don't pressure yourself to keep up with the societal expectations of being a social butterfly. It's okay to choose depth over breadth in your relationships. 
it's okay to prefer a few close friends over a large group of acquaintances. Remember, it's not about how many friends you have, it's about the quality of the connections you make.